Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Continuing on the Hot Rod Power Tour prep for my 1971 Chevy Nova. So one thing that I like about the Holly fuel injection system on the car, which is the Terminator X, is all of the stock sensors from the engine all feed into the Holly computer. And you can see everything on the little 3.5 LCD dash mounted screen. My idea was to add a trans temp sensor. I like how the car doesn't have gauges all over it. Uh, it's just got the LCD screen and it's got a, a aftermarket tack mounted to the steering column. I thought it would be a plug and play situation to add the transmission temperature gauge to the system. However, what I discovered was the Holly Terminator X system is more of a low end system. Uh, it has a lot of adjustability, but it doesn't have a lot of inputs. Some of the more expensive systems give you plenty of inputs. I guess more if you're like a race car guy or a serious uh, street car guy with tons of inputs available. So there's only four external inputs, I believe, that are available on the Terminator X. And none of them will work with a standard transmission temperature sensor or any kind of temperature sensor. Most temperature sensors are called thermistor and they use varying amount of ohms to register and translate into a temperature. The inputs don't have that option on the Terminator X. There is a zero to five volt uh, option. So if you have a sensor that can register in volts rather than ohms, then it should be able to work. So doing my little research, I found that there's really not many options when it comes to a temperature sensor that would fit for where I wanted it to and give the zero to five volt reading. So I found this Autosport Labs. It's got the short probe on it. It's one eighth pipe thread. I happen to have this little coupling which is, I think it's a 6AN. This is very old, but it's got a little plug here and this, is, this will be where the sensor goes in. On the car is a transmission cooler, which is mounted underneath the car and the lines coming out of it look to be this size. So I can just put this in line, put the sensor in and then the cable looks like it might be long enough to actually reach inside behind the dash and there's a ton of wires, but there should be a, a four pin connector that will supply the five volt reference signal. And then there is a eight pin connector, which should contain an input that I can map into the Terminator system and be able to hopefully display the transmission temperature on the little 3.5 LCD. Today, I'm going to start the process, get the sensor in, get the wiring in, and hopefully I will be able to show you how it all connects. Well, my idea of using this is not going to work because when you put the sensor in, pretty much blocks the whole flow of the fitting. So um, there is a pressure port on the side of the transmission, which looks like it might be the same thread I'm going to look into uh, if I can put that in there. Well, that's not going to work. So, yeah, you can't really put it in the pressure port because it's not going to give an accurate reading. It needs to be in the pan, which is probably, you know, the best place for it anyway. So, um, I don't, I really don't feel like dropping the pan on this thing. It's such a mess, but let me see if I can uh, figure something out. So doing a little more research about the transmission temperature sensor and it seems the consensus is the best place to get the average transmission oil temperature is in the transmission oil pan not in the cooler line it could read if it's the line coming out of the transmission it could read a lot hotter and if it's the line coming out of the cooler it could read a lot cooler than it really is in the transmission so I went and I, to my local parts store and they had this drain plug and I thought it might be a 1 8 NPT 
but it's not. It's, I mean, it might be, but it's got this O-ring and it necks down in there. So the sensor is not going to fit in there. So I'm going, I was going to order one off Amazon, but it said it might take two weeks. I'm really, I want to get this going right away. So I'm going to check with uh, SK Speed maybe later or tomorrow and see if they have them with the 1 8 MPT thread. It's annoying, but I will have to drop the pan and uh, drill a hole in the pan and then put everything all back in. But I think in the long run, it'll, it's the best option. Well, I've been dreading this all week, but it's time. One of my least favorite things to do. Transmission pan coming down to put the sensor in it. So I'm going to clean up the pan clean it up as best I can because my plan is to reuse the fluid because you know that's not why we're doing this so everything's working fine we're just gonna drain it I got this bin here clean bin should be wide enough to catch most of the drips and uh, clean take the pan down clean it Drill the hole for the drain plug with the sensor. And I got a new gasket for it in case I need one. Probably will need one. And hopefully this doesn't turn into an all day thing, but as you know, the way I work, I'm sure this will be going on until dark. I got the pan down. I mean, not all the way, but I got all the bolts out. I drained a lot of the oil, but it's getting hung up on this exhaust crossover pipe here. It's kind of a tight fit on the other side too with the cross member. So looks like I'm going to have to undo this and that get this pipe out of the way to get this down. It's getting hung up on the filter and whatever's inside. Mm -hmm. So pan is out and, um, it was a weird situation with the uh, filter, trans filter, kind of dangling, kind of loose. Um, I've never, I don't know if that's normal. I haven't seen anything like that before. But I'm just going to clean this pan up and then uh, find a spot to drill the hole. I'm going to locate it on the, the left side, the driver's side, just because the hole in the firewall, we're going to pass the wires on the driver's side and just trying to find a flat area so i'm going to put it on the side here back is all kind of roundish um so i made a punch with the center punch thing right there i've got my half inch unit bit half inch hole this is the fitting the washer the nylon washer the inside nut and this is the plug, but instead of the plug, I'm going to use the, the 18 MPT sensor. And should be good to go, hopefully. And then this can also be used as a drain plug in the future. And, uh, you know, it's towards the rear a little bit. You would probably just jack up the passenger side of the car and the uh, fluid would come out on the driver's side. Most of it anyway. Enough where you could take it down and not have it spilling all over. Drain plug installed. Pan is on. Now I'm ready to refill. And the dipstick has a really small opening. And I bought this little funnel. It's the smallest one they had at Walmart. Still doesn't fit. So, I guess what I'm going to have to do is do my fluid transfer pump from Harbor Freight. And I, it doesn't even fit this. I have to go with the smaller tube. So this should take a while. Um, I started pouring the fluid from the plastic bin into this jar through the strainer. Just in case any debris got in there. So, this should be uh, interesting. It took five jars full. 
uh, to get it back in here. And as usual, everything started off really nice and neat and clean. Um, I could not get it pumped through this tiny little hose, so I found a little plastic fitting that I was able to jam in there, and that helped move it along a lot quicker. Right towards the end, things got a little zany, and I've got a huge mess to deal with. Fluid everywhere. But, uh, you know, 98% of it, I'd say, would, would be back in there. So I ran the sensor wire. I zip-tied it to the kick-down wire, which runs above the subframe rail. And it goes up in front of the firewall. Wire comes around by all these other harnesses and goes through. There's a uh, big hole in the firewall there. Try to seal that up a little bit better, but that's where all the wires go through to the inside of the car. The Holly Terminator X computer comes with all of the standard inputs like coolant temperature sensor, oil pressure, fuel pressure, etc. Uh, it does not have a dedicated input for transmission temperature. So they do offer four inputs on the main harness. So this is, um, this, the car already had on pin A3, input number two, a rev limiter launch retard. Uh, the other three were unused. So I assigned trans temperature to input number one, which is pin A12. And then looking on the Holly chart here, A12 is a white wire with a blue stripe. Now, under the dash coming out of the main harness, there's this eight pin connector, and that's where we are going to look. And I've seen it, I know where it is. The wires are kind of just there, ready to connect to. Now from the wiring that's coming from the sensor, I got off this really good post on the Holly forums. This guy, Danny, Cabral, excellent work, Danny, for laying this all out. Showing you all the different options you can use to do a temperature sensor input. Some of the more expensive, sophisticated Holly computers have an easier way to install it. But for the Terminator X, which is the one I have, he mentions here Holly Sniper or Terminator X that don't have a thermistor type input. Autosport Labs, which is the sensor that I ordered, uh, puts out a 3 to 5 volt in linear fashion. So the wires are green uh, ground, red is the power source, 3 to 5 volts, and yellow is the signal. So the yellow is the one that's going to go to the white with the blue stripe on the main harness, and then there's what's called a power tap connector that also comes out of the main harness, which is gonna provide the five volts, pin C orange, and the ground, pin B black and white. So those are the connect, the three connections I need to make. So to recap, and I have to do this or else, or else I'll forget, on the, the four pin power tap connector coming from the Terminator harness, the orange, wire is going to go to the red sensor wire. The black and white wire is going to go to the green sensor wire. And on the eight pin input connector, the white blue wire is going to go to the yellow sensor wire. This connector was already on the harness connected to the four pin power tap. So it didn't have any of the pins so I found them on Amazon, and uh, this is called a, um, I believe it's called a, a Delphi Metropack connector. So I got the pins, uh, so that'll take care of that. The 8-pin connector has uh, an 8, like one of these, but for 8, and it's got pigtail wires coming out of it. So that, that I'll just 
crimp to for the white and the blue. And here we are under the dash. This is the eight pin inputs connector right here. And these are the wires coming out. So here's my white and blue right here. And behind it, this is the power tap connector here. It's this one right here. I wanted to test it out before I finalized everything. So I connected the the red sensor wire to the to the orange uh, pin, the green ground sensor wire to the black and white, and then I've got the yellow going to the voltmeter, and I'm getting 0.67 volts, which corresponds with about a little less than 68 degrees, which that's pretty much the temperature in the garage, so I think it's actually working, surprisingly. So I'm going to finalize the connections now. Conveniently, the pins are marked. So you got B and C, the ones we need. This... Um, this here is the wire coming in. This is the wire coming in from the sensor. It's got this special, I think it's called an M8 or something, some kind of European connector. You can buy a pigtail that would screw onto this, but I was already spending so much on this. I'm just gonna cut it and uh, connect the wires directly. Okay, I ran into a little snag. Um, I cannot get these pins to click into this connector. I double checked. Um, this is the 150 series connector. That's the pins I ordered. Uh, they just will not click in. I tried watching some other videos on people assembling these and they're just kind of like, oh yeah, you just stick it in and it locks and uh, something's wrong. I'm doing something wrong. The pins, something is wrong. So I'm going to have to figure out another way to get this connected. For now, I put some heat shrink so these two won't ground short out against each other. I just stuck the pins into the connector. This will just have to be my temporary solution until I figure out what's going on with that connector. and. I have the right pins or what I'm doing wrong but um, hopefully this works for now and these things stay in there all right so now the next step is loading this new configuration into the ECM took the tune that I had saved on here that was in the car I added the configuration for the uh, trans temp sensor this is what I did so you go into inputs outputs and then you go on what did I do here I went on inputs so on the number one I added trans temp selected the type they give you the different options here I selected 5 volt and then when you go into configuration you know you fill this out uh, 5 volts, custom units Fahrenheit, uh, the minimum temperature of the sensor, which I got from Autosport Labs, and also what that guy Danny had on the forum. Maximum is 302 degrees. And then down here is how you enter in the calibration. So 32 degrees, max 302 degrees, and then you go, you right click it, and you do fill row values, and it fills in a linear value for all the different temperatures along the scale. Same thing with the voltage at the bottom, the minimum, 
0.5 volts the maximum is 2 volts fill in the rows it gives you this nice linear graph here so theoretically it should be ready to go I need to load the tune update the tune in the car so I'm gonna have to figure that out I got it plugged into the CAN bus connector I put a splitter because the they only give you one CAN bus connector and if you have the touch screen that's using that connector so I got a, a uh, from Holly I order a Y so you can go have two different CAN bus connectors so I'm able to plug in the wire that goes to the USB for the laptop ECU config does not match I'm gonna uh, send it to the ECU so it should be updating now Change changes that require ignition power to be cycled. Turn the ignition off. Turn it on. I gotta find out where I can view this sensor. All right, so of course we hit another snag, no surprise. If you go into the dash setup, uh, choose your dash, change channels and gauges, choose which position you want to use, and then it gives you the option to select a channel. There's all these different channels with data. Of course, the one I added is not an option, right? So I was able to see it on here, if you go into the little lower corner of the sensors box, I guess when I entered the trans temp on the IO page as the first input, it put it there. All of these little sensor boxes are full, except for like these two empty ones here, pretty empty. So I went to the transmission section. I, I dragged and dropped gear down to an unused area and then I dragged trans temp into the transmission section. So when you call up the sensors here, it will show you the transmission temperature, but you would have to keep the laptop connected and open to view it, which is ridiculous. Apparently the this, this small 3.5 screen doesn't give you the option to display inputs outputs. So I'm looking on the Holly forum again and it seems like if you update the software in the screen in your uh, laptop, if you update to version 4, it may be possible to call it up on here. I don't know. I have to look into this a little bit further. So what I figured out was in order to display the trans temp sensor, which is an input-output, on the little handheld screen I had to update the firmware I this one was on version 2 version 3 allows you to choose uh, more categories to display so in order to update the firmware um, I'm gonna put some links in the description because Holly has a video on how to do it I could never uh, it's it's a little complicated I could never come close to what they're doing so check out their video how to update the firmware to version 3 then well apparently changed all my settings but you go, you pick one of your dashes so I was using dash 2 go into dash setup choose dash 2 or whichever dash you're using uh, change channels and gauges and then it shows you what you have now I added trans temp up here so if you wanted to see how to do that you would just there's so many different options here and there's pay you can page through the screens until you find what you want to display then you hit okay save 
and that's how you can uh, add it to the screen. So now I can watch the trans temp on the screen in the car instead of having to look at the laptop. So that's a much better situation. watching the transmission temperature over the past few days and um, seems like when you're just driving around in regular street city type traffic it stays around 140. I got into a little traffic situation and um, for about maybe 10-15 minutes and it went up to about 160 this morning. As soon as I started moving it went back down again and then later in the day um, I guess it was a little bit warmer out and on the highway, I think it was running around 150-ish, 160. Then I got stuck at a long traffic light and went up to about 180. But as soon as I start moving, it comes down. Um, so that's my only concern is that if I'm stuck in a lot of traffic, it could keep creeping up. But the good thing is as soon as you start moving, it comes down. So I don't have it in me to go any further with this, with cooling fans or anything. I'm gonna bring I have two different fans. I'm going to bring them with me on the trip. If it becomes like a crisis situation, I'll just have to install them then. But I'm just going to roll with what I got and hope for the best. Thanks for watching. There'll be more videos before I head out on the trip. So please subscribe and uh, turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. And I will see you soon.